Okay, here we are with Root Wireless at uh, Showstoppers at CES 2010. I'm joined by Paul Griff. Now, Paul, you're going to tell us, you know, I don't know if anybody watching this for the first time is going to know who you are, but by the time we're through this, they're going to know who you are, what you do, and everything else. Because I know now you're up to some really cool stuff that matters to people, really, really matters to, to a lot of people. So, walk us through here. Let me begin with the end. There is no best carrier. There's only a carrier that's best for you. All we do is measure the efficacy of all the major wireless networks at a very granular level. We do it from the end user's perspective. So the background here is that we have a very small application that runs in the background on the location of where smartphone, including any GPS equipment device, that in the background is measuring signal strength, it's measuring data speeds, upload and download, network latency, grabbing cell tower IDs, and a number of other key performance indicators, geotagging that information, caching it on the device, then periodically sending it back to our service. We render that information in the form of maps that allow an end user to look at the actual performance of the network and provide a, a, a hard data so that you can compare one network to another. Up until now, the only data that's been available to an end user is what they carry on coverage maps. It's kind of like letting the fox tell you it's safe or the wolf tell you it's safe to go to the pen. <laughs> Mixing my metaphors here. Well, this is this is highly relevant right now, just because of all the commercials we're seeing, right? The the maps and it's a perfect storm for uh, for what we're doing. So, so what we've done to get this kicked off is we've taken 16 markets to date. We're in the process of doing another five right now, where we've gone out and done our own equivalent of drive testing to very thoroughly map these major markets. But ultimately, our future is based around the idea of crowdsourcing. Having wireless enthusiasts and other people that are motivated to take part in this download our app, let it run in the background on their device at a very low duty cycle, gathering information that allows us to produce maps that are helpful to carriers, allow them to make informed wireless decisions. Makes sense. So if you're a BlackBerry user, you have GPS on your device, you know where you are. Or I guess based off cell towers, you know where you are. Correct. And then you're collecting data that you guys are then compiling and really telling the full story on. So my guess is you want to see some data. Yeah, show me, yeah. Let's see, I want to know what... Uh... Uh, let me uh, get out of our endless loop video here. Sure. I'll go to CNET where our data is currently available in beta form. We're up on, in, in, uh, on CNET in 15 markets right now. Let me go down and choose a, uh, a RIM device. Although at the moment, none of this information is device-centric. Going forward, we will be measuring the efficacy of the devices as well as the networks. So what I'm going to do here is, and unfortunately we have a very low res screen that we rented from these lovely people. <laughs> uh, I'm going to just close out of this window if I can get this low res screen to pay attention. Is there a particular market you'd like to see from those that are tagged there? Well, okay, do we are uh, Las Vegas isn't tagged there, right? Uh, actually, I believe that's Las Vegas. Since we're in Las Vegas right now. So what we're looking at right now is T-Mobile in Las Vegas. And let me pan out to give you a sense of how large of an area that we've, we've covered. Now when I pan out this far, what we do effectively is to average out all really interesting data. But before I start zooming in, let me point out that right now we're looking only at signal strength on T-Mobile, and you'll see that every area that we've mapped here averages out to a 69% signal strength. Okay. Before we start zooming in and looking at details, let's compare this to the other carriers. The same area is 79% on AT&T, is 85% on Sprint, percent on Verizon. So that's average That's average signal strength. strength. Okay, so, so we're not talking speed at all yet. We're talking simply strength of connection. Correct. Before okay. I start looking at speed, so let me zoom in a little sure. bit so that we, we are looking at some data that's a bit more important. And what you'll see here, we're still looking at data, uh, excuse me, at signal strength. There's a, a bar along the bottom here that converts the colors into signal strength. Now I'm going to move this to data. And 
again, my apologies about this low res screen and having to keep scrolling down. But what we're seeing here is that all of these pink hexagons represent 3G data, and you can see what the minimum download speeds that we've recorded have been, what the maximum is, and what the averages are. Right. We can use those to compare carrier to carrier, and I, I think if I flip through all of the carriers, you'll see a few kind of teal colored hexagram hexes show up that will indicate that we're still seeing 2.5G data in some locations. The third way of looking at the data on CNET is to look at what we refer to as network errors. So I'm going to scroll through the different carriers. Right now we're looking at Verizon. You'll see that there are four hexagons in which there are four locations in which we've recorded no bars. These are dead zones. Doesn't necessarily mean there's a dead zone, but it means that there was a location at which we measured no bars Got it. on the phone. If I look at one of the other carriers, let's try Sprint. So here you're not only going to see some, some black locations, but we see some red locations which indicate access failures. That means we tried to get on the data network unsuccessfully. Got it. So the idea here is that rather than relying on advertising slogans from carriers, you have an opportunity to look at empirical data and choose the carrier that's best suited to your particular usage patterns, the locations that are important. Right, where you live, where you work, where you're driving, everything else, and where so you visit. When you're, when you're running your our app on your phone, in addition to it in the background gathering data on a very light duty cycle, there will be capabilities for you to tell it, I'm in an area, you, you can tell it to start recording, test my network. Where perhaps you're on a commute and there's an area that you know the coverage is bad, that you have a history of problems, right. tell it to record that area, ensure that it's being recorded and added to the master database. Right. And then if you're an enthusiast and you're kind of a geek about some of these things, you can opt in at a second level and set up a personal web page for you that allows you to take a look at only the data that you've contributed. Oh, wow, okay. The aggregate database. What that'll look like is this. So this is data that I collected when I flew into Vegas this morning, driving away from the airport. What you see here, all of these green wow. dots, indicating that I had four bars, using a four bar scale, four bars of signal strength. The yellow are three bars. This is geek heaven right here. Oh, this is... Wow. You think this is geek heaven. Let me uh, narrow this down a bit further. And I mean that geek heaven in the good way, right? Like, that's oh, this is hey, interesting stuff. We love geeks. Yeah. Now, a lot of that data just went away, because right now all I'm looking at are the data speed tests that we did. Okay. So I'm going to click on that dot, and you can see that from that location, you can see the download speed at 354 kbps, 74 kilobytes per second on the uh, upload, and you're able to look at long and lat and all of the. So ideally, things. ideally, right now, you guys just need lots of users to install the apps. So you get a ton of data coming in. The more users, the more accurate, the more data, the more. The more granular it gets, the better it gets. Critical mass for us nationwide is having about 50,000 people per carrier, but more is better. There's a very sophisticated interaction between this application and our servers where we send out instruction files to each device every few hours telling it where and when we expect it to be and what type of data we need it to gather. Understood. Now, do you treat sort of all devices as equal in this case then? Like, because obviously we're putting it on, the, we're measuring the carriers here, but I'm sure certain, uh, you know, even all, like Blackberries. So if you took three Blackberries side by side on the same carrier, one model might be better than the other due to the radio or whatever else. Without a doubt. So that's the big benefit to crowdsourcing. The network data we can gather to a very great degree continuing our drive testing. The big benefit to crowdsourcing is not only does the data get a lot more granular, but we start gathering data on the performance of each model of handset. Right. So we start rating handsets, and then we're able to mine that data to identify the common denominators between the best and worst performing handsets. Interesting. That becomes very valuable to not only end users, but a number of stakeholders.